everyone needs to know how to grow bean sprouts. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I do it cheap and easy. As a bonus, in less than 15 minutes, I'm going to show you 10 awesome ways that you can use the bean sprouts too. And these are going to be cheap and easy ways. They might look fancy, but they're so easy to make. You can change them up to suit your taste. And you can make dishes for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. The bean sprout is really a very versatile plant. Now I'll explain my way of growing it. You can grow them in a jar, but that's more prone to bacteria. I like growing it this way. It's in the open air. And when I harvest them, I like having a nice straight stem. Looks better in the recipes, but that's just personal preference. See, back in our younger days, we catered. And the nice straight bean sprouts look better than a big jumbled mess. But the choice is up to you. Alright, let's grow some bean sprouts. Now, I used these trays that my ramen came in just because I have a bunch of them. I don't like tossing stuff in the recycling bin or going to the landfill. So I just take one of them and I punch some holes in here with a soldering iron. You could use a drill or whatever you have. I double stack them. We're going to take the bottom layer and just put some clear water in it. Nothing fancy, no nutrients, just straight out of the hose. You can use whatever kind of water you want, reverse osmosis, what have you. The choice is up to you. Now the second layer is the one that I have the holes in. And I like doing it this way because I can put the beans in here, soak them overnight, and you're going to see how easy it is just to drain them. Now the amount of beans that you use is up to you. You don't want to have too many, but you want to have enough so that they help support each other and they stand straight up. That's how you get a nice straight stem. So the first night we're just going to soak it, we cover them up. And I like to put a big heavy lid on top of them just so the wind doesn't blow it off. Or you get some curious cat wondering what's going on. So the next day, we're going to come and uncover them. They've been soaking all night. And all you do is lift them up. And the water drains out. Now your beans are ready to go. That's why I like setting it up like this. So I toss out the soak water. You're not going to waste that much. And just set them in here. Cover them back up. And all we're going to do from here is two or three times a day is come in and rinse them out really good. The first couple of days you're just going to want to rinse them like this. And that's what's going to help keep the bacteria down too is just keeping it nice and clean. After it's drained, set it back in its container. That will help keep it moist so it doesn't dry out. And in a few days you can have bean sprouts just like this. And at this point you can eat them already. There's just loads of bean sprouts here. Now some people like this, if you rinse these off, the little green holes just float to the top and you're ready to go. So in a couple of days you can have you several meals ready. Now we want these to grow into sprouts so we cover them back up and we keep rinsing them. And at this point, about five days, these sprouts are holding up about 20 pounds of water and they're pushing up. They're saying they want out. And I keep them like this because I don't want the leaves to turn green. To me, it tastes like grass. I like the leaves to be yellow. And then from here, I leave the lid on and I don't let the leaves see any more light. All I do is dip it in some clean water, drain it, set it back in the container, leave that top lid on, and just repeat the process. Cover them back up. And these are ready to go anytime you want. You don't have to grow as many as me. In fact, I'm just growing this many to do all these recipes that I'm going to show you. I actually only do about two or three at a time. 
some people will eat the bean sprouts before the leaves even form when they just kind of pop through and me I like to grow them out a little longer have the leaves it's a little more decorative plus these beans that I've been getting are really small years ago we used to get really fat mung beans and that would make a nice fat bean sprout but I haven't been able to find any lately so if you all find any let me know all right you can see the roots coming through the bottom but when we go to harvest it you can leave it just like this and cut it right here and that leaves the roots down in the bottom and any part that's moist and might be prone to bacteria will stay in there or you can do like this and just pull the whole thing out you can see how easy it is to pull them out the tray stays nice and clean just going to rinse it since you've been rinsing this a couple times your bottom tray is clean too everything's so easy to clean and now with the roots like I said this is just fine you can eat it if you want but I like to cut them and instead of sitting there cutting each one with the scissors you can come in with a knife and cut it wherever you like you can cut it close I like to go about here about an inch up and we got nice looking bean sprouts left this little jumble mess just goes into the compost a lot of you have chickens out there that's fine too but then we have all of this to cook with. That's wonderful. And that's just one tray. All right, let's do some cooking. All right, we wanna start with the simple stuff. You can throw bean sprouts in just about any salad. This one's gonna be a little Asian salad. All you have to do is start with your favorite vinaigrette a little oil we're using coconut aminos vinegar Keela's using champagne vinegar she loves that lots of garlic agave some sesame oil you just whisk this up till you get a nice emulsification get some greens from your garden or from the store Keela likes to chop them up with the scissors Throw in some chives. And your homegrown bean sprouts. She's also got some celery in here. Snow peas. All kinds of green goodness. Including cucumbers. Some more stuff from the garden. A little mint and cilantro. Some sesame seeds. And pour some dressing on there. As much as you're liking. This makes a nice Asian salad. But really you can toss bean sprouts on just about any salad. Garnish it with more bean sprouts. And a little pop of color. Alright, next we got stir fried bean sprouts. Something nice and simple. But this is me cooking up the bean sprouts with the leaves on it. You're going to see it looks a little bit different. Of course, we're going to have our aromatics. Garlic. You can put ginger in here if you like. Green onions. The tops and the whites and all we do is fry this up mm -hmm. on the flat top griddle you can do this just as easily inside in a wok or a skillet on your stove but get you lots of bean sprouts wash them up toss them on the griddle and this is why I love cooking on the flat top griddle I can get a lot of servings in here all at once I like to put on just a little bit of soy sauce and sesame oil 
And that's about it. And this is a great side dish. And you don't have to make this much, but as long as we got the griddle fired up, we like to make several portions. Top it with some green, a little bit of red. And that's an awesome side dish. Boop. All right, our next one's ginger beef and sprouts. This one's a good one, good spring dish. You can eat it cold or warm if you want. Keila's just mixing up some cocoa minos, olive oil. A little bit of coconut sugar garlic more garlic gotta have some green onions and lots of ginger fresh grated put in a little agave for some sweetness stir it up reserved a little bit for a dipping sauce and you just fry up your beef. We're using shaved ribeye. Cooks really fast and it soaks up a lot of that marinade. And all you do is cook this and heat it up. All right, you want me to cook this over here close? Yeah. And toss it right into that marinade. And as it cools down, it's gonna soak it all up. Now you can just go ahead and chill this for a little while. While that's sitting in the refrigerator, make a little vinaigrette, oil, vinegar, soy, Toss a bunch of bean sprouts in there. Green onions. A little radicchio. And get your little lettuce. Make it like a boat. Put you lots of that beef on there. And a big old heaping serving of those bean sprouts. This is an awesome cold dish to serve. You can make smaller portions if you want. Fantastic little appetizer. All right, our next one's bean sprout omelet with chive pancakes. Now I do mine a little bit different. I make a big omelet and I do it on a flat top griddle and I do it well done because I want to roll this thing up and be able to pick it up like a burrito. Here's a little secret from some of the restaurants I worked in. They put pancake batter into the eggs when they make an omelet. You can pan fry an omelet if you want. Like I said, these recipes are very versatile. You can do them however you like. So if you like your omelet a little bit different, a little fluffy, go ahead and do it in a skillet. Do it on your stove. But I like to mine this way. I put down peppers, shallots, loads of bean sprouts. And get me a little bit of pancake batter going. Throw some chives in it. And roll that bad boy up. Now go ahead and top this, a little bit of shallots, some cilantro, a little bit of chili peppers, and some more chives. Serve it with your favorite dipping sauce. This is an awesome breakfast. Next up we have bean sprout salad topped with fried egg. Now you can make any type of salad you want. We're going to throw together a quick marinade again. Keep it like champagne vinegar, a little coconut aminos, agave for sweetness, some sesame oil. Just stir that up. It's going to toss in some green onions, chop up some snow peas, and a little bit more of the radicchio. Just a little bit for color. Then they look awesome. Like we said, you can put anything in your salad. This is really versatile. This is the way we like it. And Keely's throwing a little bit of chili peppers on there for me. We like the spice. Big old handful of bean sprouts. Toss your dressing on there. Get that all mixed up and put on your plate. Next, you want to fry an egg. We're going to do our sunny side up. 
You can do these on your stove if you want. I do it on a flat top griddle. Makes an awesome sunny side up egg. Well done on the bottom. Yolk all runny. Pop that bad boy right on a salad. This is an awesome salad. I love this. Rice sticks. This is going on our faux faux. That's right, it's kind of a fake faux, but this is when we're in a hurry and we don't want to spend all day making a bone broth. That's awesome. Traditional faux is great. I love it. But sometimes we just want that flavor and we don't want to spend all day in the kitchen. So we just get some rice noodles, throw some shaved ribeye on it, and we're going to boil up some beef stock straight off the shelf. Then we're going to take that boiling beef stock and just pour it right on top of the ribeye and it's going to cook it right in your bowl. And you season that up any way you want. If it needs more salt, pepper, garlic, add that. But really we just like the vegetables to be the star here. Akili grates more garlic and ginger on the top. Dresses it up. Some hot chilies, green onion, and a big old handful of bean sprouts. Now those rice sticks, those fried ones, if you want extra texture, you can put a big old mountain of those on there and then put your garnish. You serve that to your guests, they're going to love it. It's faux good. Alright, next we've just got spring rolls. This is basically like the salad. Once you get a wrapper like this, you just dip it in water, about 10 seconds. And as it's setting, you can put whatever you want in it. We try to keep our ingredients a little bit dry because if you have them too wet, this is some noodles, we let those dry off. If it's too wet, the wrapper will rip. So you want to go ahead and keep your stuff on the inside, a little bit on the dry side, and you can have marinade to dip it in. Load it up with vegetables. You can put chicken, you can put steak in here if you want. But you can put anything you want into these spring rolls. Roll them up. Lots of bean sprouts. Have your little dipping sauce. Just an awesome springtime dish. All right, now we got bean sprout and pork on egg. This is a great little appetizer or snack. And it's really simple, but it's really satisfying. And of course, it's going to start with garlic. We're going to throw it on the griddle. Throw our pork on there. Get that all fried up. Little salt, little pepper. Nothing too fancy. Like I said, some of these dishes we just want to make cheap and easy. Just toss on a little bit of shallots. Fry it up. And put that to the side. Now we're going to mix up some eggs. So just scramble you up some eggs. Whip them up. Toss them on the griddle. And make them any shape you want. We like making a nice little folded egg. Uh, I'm going to make a square one here. You can make a round one. You can just make scrambled eggs. But Keely's going to use a little folded square egg here. It looks kind of cool for an appetizer. Throw your pork on there. Big old handful of bean sprouts. Hit it with a little water and cover it. It'll steam it. This is a great little appetizer. I like this just as a snack. Hot chili peppers on top. And if you're brave, throw a bunch of sriracha or hot sauce on there. It's awesome. Gluten free. All right, next one, we've got bean sprout and pork on a noodle pancake. Where would we be without garlic, carrot, And Keely's going to mix up a little pancake batter. Don't get hung up on this. Just use your favorite pancake batter. Just make it a little more thin than it usually is. Not too thick. Toss you some cooked noodles in there. A little green onion. A little carrot. Get your griddle ready. Or your pan on your stove. Put your big old handful on there. Get that fry up and flip it. That by itself is awesome. Now Keela's just got some leftover pork loin here. Like I said, we want to make it easy. A little salt and pepper. You can put whatever flavorings you want on this. We like to keep it simple. 
and a big old handful of bean sprouts. Same thing, hit it with a little water, cover it, let it steam. Put that bad boy on top of that pancake. Tap over a little cilantro, some radish, whatever kind of garnish you want. That is an awesome dish. And our last one, it's your favorite ramen. Whatever type of ramen you want. This is pre-packaged. This is one of the more higher priced ones, but you can use regular ramen. What you want to do is just go ahead and fix up your ramen. This one has some dehydrated vegetables in it. But go ahead and top it with whatever you like. Toss your fresh veggies on there. Carrots, peppers, radish, whatever protein. If you've got, we've had leftover chicken. If you've got pork, beef, whatever you like, or none at all, get you a hard-boiled egg. If you're fancy, make it a soft-boiled one. Have it with a runny yolk. That's awesome, too. And put you a big old handful of bean sprouts on top. This is going to kick up your ramen from just the plain old packaged plain everyday ramen to something that looks fantastic you're going to be happy to sit down and eat it you serve that to your family they're going to love you all right i hope that gave you guys some fantastic ideas what you can do with bean sprouts they can be served as the main dish they can be served as an appetizer as a side dish they can be served for breakfast lunch dinner they can be an appetizer they can be a snack They're, it's so versatile everybody needs to know how to grow these it only takes five to six days and you can make all kind of fantastic dishes like this so i hope that's giving you a lot of ideas you guys get out there grow some bean sprouts keep on growing catch you next time